Hey what is up guys, this is Eli for MoboxGraphics.com and in this tutorial we will be making the Scar L from Fortnite in Cinema 4D. If you want to download this exact model you can see right now, you can find it on our Patreon page. If you haven't watched the video where I make the RPG from Fortnite, go check that out first, because I will be using similar techniques in this video, but I will not be going into that much detail on them this time, because it's just the same thing. So let's get started. The first thing I will be doing is setting up some reference images I found on Google. So in this case I have the right view and also a perspective view which I will be setting up in the top view so I have something to look at without leaving Cinema 4D. So the first thing we are going to do is starting with the biggest chunk of the gun, so that will be a cube object. And I'm going to place this over this middle part right here. You can see I'm keeping it at just the center part, so not the top and bottom portion, which is slightly inclined. So let's get this aligned. And just like the RPG, we are going to try to make an extrusion at every angle. So this one will need a small extrusion and then one larger one. Don't worry about the angles just yet. We just need to have these separations vertically. Now let's go in the perspective view so we can select some of these polygons and I'm going to move this one up. And now with all the bottom ones selected, we can make an extrusion again to have this second portion at the bottom. And this way we can also scale this down on the x-axis, so it is inclined like on the image. Now let's take a look at the perspective view at the front. So we can see the object on its own can also be a little less wide, so let's scale this down on the x-axis as well. And now I want to create this portion at the top. So what we need right now are some edges which will line up with the start of this extrusion. So let's use the loop cut tool. And make some loop cuts at every side. In the loop cut options we can also set the offset to a similar value so it is the same at every side. And now we can select this middle row of polygons at the top and make an extrusion so it lines up with the image. You can also notice it is going down a little at the back but we will do this in just a minute because that way it is easier to model everything. Okay, so let's move on to the front here. These are just a bunch of cylinders, so it's not very complicated. For this one at the front it is a little different because there is a lot more detail to it. So let's make the cylinder editable. And I would like to make some changes on this front part, but if you move these polygons you can see they are not connected. So if you remember this from the previous tutorial, you need to select all the polygons and press U and O on the keyboard to optimize everything. That way all the polygons of the cylinder will be connected to each other. So this way if you move the front polygons it will work. I'm going to move this right to the point where we have these little cutouts. So that is approximately halfway the cylinder portion at the front here. And after that we can make an inner extrusion on this. And then use the extrude tool to move these pieces in a little, so it is less visible. And after that we can start to select some of the polygons at the outer ring. So I would say 4 center pieces on every side would do. Or maybe we will even be adding 2 more at every side. Make sure it is still symmetrical. And then we can extrude these out like this. Let's continue with the other cylinders. It's just the same thing. Don't worry about the smoothing just yet, we will be doing this in a later stage of the tutorial. You can also see this kind of connection between the two cylinders. So what I'm going to do is make one of these editable. Maybe I should go with the upper one even. And I will be optimizing all the polygons, that's just a good habit to do anyway if you make a cylinder editable. And then I will be selecting two of these center polygons at the bottom, so I can extrude these downwards. But you don't want to do this with the extrude tool because it will grow larger. So instead I'm going to just move this down while holding control or command on the keyboard which duplicates the polygons. But I can also notice it's not exactly right. It's going all the way to the edge at the front and you can see on the image it isn't exactly like that. So what I will be doing first is creating a loop cut somewhere about here. And then we can do the same thing again to make it look better. Maybe we can also make a first stop just above the bottom cylinder and then make a second extrusion which we can scale horizontally, so on the x-axis. That way we have this kind of bevel to it already which makes it look a little more detailed. Let's move on to this iron side at the top. This can be with a cube object. 
If you remember the process of how we did this on the RPG, it's kind of the same. So let's get this cube lined up. And we are going to move some of these edges so it has the same kind of angles on every side. We can also scale up this top polygon so it is more cartoony like on the image. And after that I will be making some cuts with the knife tool. So you can press K and K on the keyboard to get to the knife tool. And I will be deselecting the visible only option. That way I can go in the side view and just make some cuts straight through the object. I'm going to try to line these up with the angles at the front portion here. And the last thing I need to do is making that vertical cut. That way we can delete the front polygons and also these ones that we just cut out. And we can also delete the polygon at the back. Now at the top select these four edges we have at the corners. And I can use the bevel tool to make these a little more rounded. But you don't need to go all overboard with the subdivisions. I think something like three subdivisions is just enough for this. Okay, after that we can select all the polygons again and use the extrude tool to make it a little thicker. I recommend moving in a little instead of outwards. And also make sure you select create caps to make it a solid object. Now at the bottom here we need this little pin that points up. So what we can do is going to the loop cut tool. So you can just cut somewhere and set the offset to 50%. That way it's exactly in the middle. And after that we will be selecting this ring of edges with the loop selection tool. And this way if we use the bevel tool and set the bevel mode to solid, we can make two new edges at every side exactly at the same distance from the center one. So now let's make yet another loop cut in the other direction. This way we have some squarish polygons at the front, which we can extrude upwards and scale down at the top. So we have this kind of crosshair at the iron side. Let's move on to this black part at the top. We will be making a cube again. And we're going to try to make this cube exactly the size of all these pieces at the top. And you should make sure this is still happening without making the object editable. Because we will be adding segments to this. So what you can see is we have 14 of these little pieces at the top. So what I will be doing is having two segments for every piece at the top here. And in between we will have one segment. So let's do some quick math. We have 14 of these pieces at the top, so let's set it to 14 segments. But I just said it will be two segments for each, so let's multiply this by two. And we also have 13 of these separations in the middle, so let's add 13 to the segments. And that way we come to 41 segments for this on the Z axis. So now we can make this editable. And I'm going to select all the top polygons and move these down so they line up with the bottom of these pieces. Now I can go ahead and manually select every two polygons and skip one each time. And after that I can make an extrusion upwards so it lines up with the image. I would recommend just lining it up with the front one, so the one at the right side of the image and not the left one because it is going down a little. But we will be fixing this in just a minute. Another thing we can do is making that small second extrusion and scaling this down on the x-axis again. Another thing I'm going to do is use the life selection tool so I can go in the front view and select all the bottom points of this object. And let's move this up a little so we can make this small piece at the bottom. The easiest way to do this is selecting all the bottom polygons. And then we will use the scale tool while holding control or command to scale this down on the x-axis again. So we have new polygons in the center and that way we can use the extrude tool to move these down again. Okay, let's move on to this back portion right here. I'm going to extrude these two bottom pieces out a little and let's stop at this first angle right here. Then we can make a second extrusion and maybe move this bottom piece out a little more and move this edge over so we have an angle like it is on the image. Then we can select this new polygon we had at the top and extrude this up. And of course you can do the same thing with the edge again. I'm also going to select these two top edges and scale these in a little. Maybe I need one more extrusion first like this. For the iron side we will be doing something different than the front one because it looks totally different. So what we can do is create a new cube object and try to line it up again. Then we will be starting to make some loop cuts, so one right here and also one at the center. 
So we can use the bevel tool again to make two more edges at every side. This way we can select some of these middle polygons and delete them. But now the object is kind of destroyed, so what we can do is going in the edge mode and using the bridge tool to connect these edges with each other again. Let's move these two outer edges at the top outwards as well. Let's also add a cylinder at the side here. And I'm going to make this editable so we can select these front polygons and scale these down a little. And another thing we can do is creating a bool object and also a cube which is the size of this middle piece which goes in. And that way if we drag this both under the bool object and place it in the right order we have something that looks like the screw at the side. So let's angle this just like it should be. And to create the second one at the other side I'm not going to duplicate the bool object but I will just be creating a group for the cubes and a group for the cylinders and then inside of this we can duplicate each one and move these to the other side so that way it's just a little more compact instead of two bool objects. Okay let's move on to the back piece of this rifle. You can see it kind of lines up with the first piece we created so this big cube actually. What we can do is duplicating this object and we will be selecting the polygons at this side, like so. And then we can press U and I to invert the selection and delete everything that is at the front. So we only need these polygons to start with. So now we can move these to the first position of this back piece. Also don't worry about the angle just yet because you can see this slightly higher than the image. But that is because we didn't add the rounding just yet. But just try to make it something close to it. And now we can select this bottom edge here and make some extrusions downwards so we go all the way to the bottom of this piece. And now when we have all the polygons selected we can make this first extrusion to give it some depth. Don't forget to end the extrusion at every angle. And now we can go ahead and move some of these edges and points to line up with the image. Maybe it is also a good time to move this top piece as well so it exactly lines up with the image. Another thing you can see it is going in a little at the right side again. So what we can do is we'll make a loop cut right at this spot. And after that we are going to delete some of these polygons and use the bridge tool again to connect all the gaps. Okay so let's try and line up this piece at the front as well. So we will only need to move these top points. For these two edges at the center I recommend moving them together so it looks cleaner. And now the last thing we need to angle is this piece at the top. But this one is a little more complex because we have a lot more geometry to this. So what we can do is adding a deformer to this which will be the FFD deformer. This way if we drag this on top of the cube you can go ahead and click on fit to parent. This way it's exactly the size of the object. And after that we are going to decrease the grid points to the minimum so that is 2. That way it's just a cube again. And after that we can select some of these points at the bottom and line these up and also the ones at the top. So that is quite easy to do actually. But you can see here at the back we have some problems because it's not exactly what it should be. So the easiest thing to do actually is just deleting some of these points and just start over. So I will be starting with these two polygons again and make these extrusions correct this time. So what I did wrong was using just one polygon at the back and not two of them. And the rest of it is just the same steps again. Also if you notice some strange behavior like this on the end, it's just because the FFD deformer is smaller than the actual object. So what we can do is going in the FFD again and clicking fit to parent once more so it exactly lines up with the object. So this looks good now I think. Let's move on to this back piece right here. We have one connection here between the two pieces which will be just a cube for now. And we can also duplicate this cube for the second piece. This one will be a little larger of course. And I will just try to line up some of these points with the image like this. So that is a very simple shape. So what we can do now is creating a loop cut again at the center, so 50%. And now we can select the top and bottom edges. 
and scale these up a little. So this way we have more of a detail to this. And also we can scale up these back polygons to make it look a little larger like it is on the image. Let's get one more cube at the back here. And it looks like I need to make some minor changes on the other object first. And after that we can try to line this cube up so it looks like the image. So that is nothing too difficult. One more thing we can do to this cube is adding these little pieces at the back. So let's try to create a loop cut. And I want to have these exactly the same distance from each other. So what we can do is increasing the number of cuts like this. So it kind of lines up with the image. So maybe 10 will do. This way we can select every other one and make an extrusion again. So we have some kind of simple representation of these pieces at the back. So one more important piece we need is this one at the bottom, which holds the trigger. So what we can do again is duplicating this object right here. And after that I'm just going to select these two bottom polygons and invert the selection again. And then delete everything, so we have just these two polygons. And actually maybe we can just start with the stop one even. I'm doing this because the shape is a little more complicated, because we have some rounding right here at the beginning but we don't have the rounding at the end of the extrusions, so it is easier to start with some straight edges instead of curved ones. So that is why I want these straight lines right now. So let's make extrusions on these polygons again and stop at every angle. And now we can start to move some of these points around and make some extrusions downwards so it lines up with the image. Also here at the magazine compartment we can use the inner extrude tool to make it a little larger and then extrude again. For the grip it is also less complicated than it may look. So just make an extrusion like this and line up the edges at the side. And we are going to make sure there is a loop of edges at every point that is a little larger than the rest. And also at every point that is a little smaller than the rest. So this way we can go ahead and select these points and just move them in a little so we have the rough shape of this hand grip. For the trigger part I'm going to use a second object, which is just a cube again. And I'm going to make some loop cuts again at every side of the cube. This way we can delete these center polygons again. And then just use the bridge tool again to connect every piece. The trigger can be a cube object again with some extrusions to it, which kind of follow the curve of it. So now it is a good time to add this magazine at the bottom. So that is just a cube object again. And try to line it up with the top part. Don't worry about the curve just yet. We're going to add some segments to this. On the Y axis it can be quite a lot, so we have enough points to make the curve. And on the Z axis it can be just 5. So we have these two lines on the center you can see on the image. So what we can do now is creating a bend object. And dragging it on top of the object. Let's click fit to parent to make it exactly the size of it. And also increase the strength to see how it bends. And you can see it is going in the wrong direction. So what we need to do first is rotating this bend object. And try again. So that is still not the correct direction. So let's try again. This looks better. This way we can set the strength to exactly the size it needs to be. Maybe we also need to rotate the whole cube on its own, so it is just a little more lined up with the image. And I can also see the cube is a little too long, so what I'm going to do is just delete some of these polygons and fix the gaps with the bridge tool again. And after that we can select these bottom polygons and use the inner extrusion tool to make it a little bigger again. And then use the extrude tool again to give this a little bit of depth. Okay, let's move on to these two center lines. So what we can do is using the loop selection tool to select these two rows of polygons. Or actually maybe we can just use the center one and scale this horizontally so the other two ones are getting a little smaller. And that way we can select these two rows and deselect some of these polygons at the bottom. And then use the extrude tool to move these inwards. So the last pieces we need right now are these at the back here. 
So these are quite simple. These are just some cube objects. So one right here, kind of the size of the rifle itself. And the second one right here, which will be just a little wider. More the size of the back piece actually. And I'm also going to make a second extrusion at the bottom, which we can scale horizontally again, so this giving us this kind of curve to it. Okay, so I think this is quite a good base model to continue with, so we can add some details to this. And after that we will be adding some more rounding to make it look less low poly and more realistic. So let's continue with adding some of the details to this. The first detail we are going to add are these black pieces at the top. We can do this by adding some loop cuts, which line up with the top and the bottom of these pieces. And we will also be adding some loop cuts vertically, which line up with the sides of it. Also looking at my model, I'm going to undo this all, so I can move these two points a little lower because they're too high up right now. And after that I can redo the loop cuts like this. So let's select these polygons we just created. And let's also do the same thing on the other side. And after that you can use the extrude tool to make them sink in just a little. Okay, so some other details we are going to add are these small rings at this side of the rifle. So we can use a tube object for this and just scale it down. And we will also be adding some kind of small fillet to this, which will make it look a little rounded. Next up let's add this piece right here. I don't know what it is, but we are going to add it anyway. So we can start with a cube object of course, and we're going to scale this to the size of it. Let's add a second segment on the Y axis, so we have a middle cut. This way we can make this editable and select the two top polygons and scale this down. And after that we can select this front edge and move it out a little to get a little closer to the shape of the original object. Let's also add the rings on this. Also down here we have this cylinder, this is quite an easy one, but just try to keep this cylinder centered on the x-axis, so this way we can make this just large enough or long enough, so we have the cylinder on both sides. Okay, next up is this piece right here, I guess it's the exit of the gun shells. So we are going to add four loop cuts for this. Let's make an extrusion on this again. And we're also going to add a cylinder object again. Let's position it so it kind of lines up. And after that we can make this editable again and optimize all the points. And I'm going to select four of these polygons at this side. And then just use the move tool while holding command or control again to extrude this towards the rifle. I'm also going to scale this down vertically just a little because it's not exactly round on the image anyway. Okay, next thing is this switch at the bottom, so get a cylinder again. We're going to optimize again and make an inner extrusion on these polygons at the top. So this way we can select some of the polygons at the side and make an extrusion on this again with the move tool, so it has straight lines. Maybe just scale it up a little more. And this way we can select these new polygons at the top we just created and then just extrude them up again. So that is the switch. Let's move on to this detail right here. This is a cube object again. And I'm just going to add loop cuts at every intersection, so I can select these new polygons I just created and extrude these outwards again. Let's also add the cylinder on top of this, and I'm going to scale down the top polygons again, so it has a little bit of an angle to it. Okay, so it looks like we added all the details to this, which is great. So now we can go ahead and add some lighting to this maybe. So what I'm going to do is just reuse the lighting setup of the previous video, so you can check out that video if you haven't already. And I'm just going to paste that inside of this project. Now for this one it looks like I need to rotate the lighting setup 180 degrees, so let's do that. And I'm also going to remove some of the blue lighting of it and make it a little more warm with some yellow tones to it. We can also add the ambient occlusion effect to it. And then if you render you can see it is starting to look pretty good. 
I don't exactly like the lighting from the bottom because it is giving some hard shadows to the top. So what I'm going to do is move this a little and also disable the shadow on this as well. Okay, uh, next thing I'm going to do is going back to that RPG model and I'm going to copy and paste the metal material. If you don't have that material, you should go ahead and check that previous video again. But the main difference on this material and that one on the RPG is that this one will be less blue but more reddish. I'm also going to decrease the specular strength on this because it doesn't need to be that shiny like the RPG. Let's create a second material which will be the main color for the body. This will be some kind of brown yellow. And I'm also going to add a texture to this which will be a noise. So click on the thumbnail to open it. And you can click on this little arrow to open the menu of all the different kinds of noise you can get. And I'm going to use this one at the bottom which is blurry and that is exactly what I'm looking for. Let's also increase the global scale of it so we have larger patches of it. And I'm also going to change the colors of this so it isn't going exactly from white to black but just from dark grey to light grey. Let's also set the mix mode of it to add and I'm going to decrease the mix strength of it to 50% so it is a little softer. Let's go to the reflectance and we can keep everything at default but just maybe lower the width of it and also increase the strength of it. Let's create a new material again. And this one will be for the metal pieces at the top and the iron sides, so that is a little softer, less shiny kind of metal. This one will be some kind of grey again, but with a hint of hot pink in it. I'm also going to add a texture to this again, which will be a Fresnel. And also let's set the mix mode to add again, and the mix strength can be just 10%. Under the reflectance channel I'm just going to increase the specular strength to 50%. Ok, new material again, which will be for the light grey details. So this is just light grey with a hint of blue in it. And the reflectance can be a little stronger again. One more material we need is for the small dark details. So again this will be some kind of dark grey with a hint of blue in it again. And we can just keep the specular as it is maybe. So let's add some of these materials on this. I'm going to speed this up for you so it isn't as boring. But it is just the same thing I do in all my videos. Which is adding the material on the whole object on its own. Or just selecting some of the polygons and dragging the material on top of that. Also one more thing I think we need to add. Is a second variation on the main color. So let's duplicate that material. And we're going to make this just a little darker. So that way it is easier to see the difference between the top part and the bottom part. Because as you can see on the image it is slightly different. So now I'm going to speed this up for you and I hope it works just fine for you as well. So looking at the render of this, it looks like quite a nice low poly version of the rifle. But we're going to add some more details to this to make it look even more realistic. I'm just quickly going to explain the techniques on this and then speed up the video again because it's a lot of work and it's just the same thing over and over again. So when you have unedited objects and you want to make them look smoother, you can go ahead and enable the fillet option on this and set it to a small radius so the caps are just slightly beveled. That is quite easy, but for the ones you made editable, you can go ahead and select some of these edges and add a chamfer bevel on this. And I would keep things at 3 or maximum 5 subdivisions, because we don't want to overdo it. For 
For this piece at the front it is a little more complicated, so I still want some rounding on this. What I'm going to do is just manually selecting the outline of edges which we have at the front here, so that is a little bit of work. But after that you can just use the bevel tool again to make it look smoother. Now the other technique we're going to use is something we have also seen in the previous video, which is using a subdivision surface. So what you can do is selecting the object you want to make smoother, and while holding Alt on the keyboard, select the subdivision surface right here, and it should be the parent of the object now, so that is great. And for this one it already looks pretty good, because it has a lot of detail on it already. But if you want to make things look a little less smoothed, you need to add loop cuts to this. So the closer you add a new loop cut to an existing edge, the sharper it will get. And if you move it further away, it will become smoother. So let's add some loop cuts. And one more thing you need to keep in mind is that you want to add a loop cut at every side of the existing edges. So we have this ring of edges, and we add a loop cut on the left and also at the right, or the bottom and the top. So usually you end up with three loops of edges at every corner. Let's do the same thing on this bottom piece so you can see how it works on this. You can see this one looks a little more distorted because we have less edges on this. And you can also see how much these details at the top are being distorted. So we need some very sharp edges on this, which means that the loop cuts need to be very close to the original edges. On this side you can also see we have some kind of strange situation. We want the top to be very close to the black piece next to it, but the bottom can be a little more rounded. So with a loop cut we would just have the same kind of sharpness or smoothness at the top and the bottom. So what we can do instead is using the knife tool, but visible only deselected, and go in the side view so we can make some cuts exactly like we wanted to. So in this example I want the top to be very sharp, so we need to make sure the cut is very close to that point. And towards the middle we want it to be smoother, so move further away from the edge at the end. And then we can make it go back to the left, so it is a little sharper again at the bottom. Also if you render you can see we have some kind of glitchy stuff going on, some creases on the edges. So let's take a look at this. And you can see this is what happens if you forget to add one more loop cut at the top of the original edges. So I hope this explanation was kind of clear to you, because I'm going to speed up the video from here. I'm going to pause the time lapse on this right here, because you can see we have some kind of glitchy stuff going on right here. And that is usually because we have some end guns or unconnected edges or points. You can see when we try to make a loop cut it doesn't go all the way around because we made some modifications to this side. So the easiest way to fix this is just using the knife tool and going in the side view so we can make a cut right from the top to the bottom.
Okay, I'm going to pause once more. So you can see you can't use the loop cut tool on this part again. So instead I'm using the line cut tool again and make the points manually. This way you also have a perfect control of how smooth you want it to be on every point because we want it to be very smooth at the left and a little sharper at the right. So this way you can see we can move the edges exactly at the height we want it to. So here I am again, I kept the most complicated piece to be the last one we are going to take a look at. And that is because if you add a subdivision surface to this one, you can see it gets very glitchy at these points right here. It usually has to do with polygons that are inside of the object, so something you can't see, and they also don't need to be there. It usually happens if you make extrusions on something which has the create caps option still turned on. So maybe this didn't happen for you, I really hope it didn't because it's a lot of work to fix this, but if it did happen, you can follow along. So let's zoom in on one of these pieces, so we get inside of it, and you can see we have this polygon right here, which is creating the glitch effect. So let's go in the edge mode, and you can see this edge right here at the middle, and just that single edge is creating this problem, so just click on it and delete it, and that way you can see what is hidden behind it. So we are going to do this on every piece and delete that middle edge inside of it. You can also enable the subdivision surface to see if it is working or not. So you can see these first two ones are smoother right now. Now we need to continue with the other ones. Now we have come to the back here and you can see it is even more problematic. And that is because we also have some planes that are not connected or intersecting inside of it. So let's go ahead and delete this top one so we can easily see what is going on inside of it. And you can see we have this polygon which is going all the way from one side to the other. But it has an edge under it which is not connected to it. So we are going to delete this polygon because it's not correct. Let's also do that inside of it. It may be a little hard to get inside of it but just try to be patient and find the wrong polygons. Okay, now after that I also think we may need to delete some of these. And I'm going to use the bridge tool again to connect these edges correctly. I'm not exactly sure if we need to remove these polygons right here, but still I'm going to select all of these and try to delete them. Okay, let's close this top polygon again, so it is fixed. And let's take a look what happens if we add the subdivision surface again. You can see we have one more glitch at the back here. So for this one it is a little more complicated. I'm just going for the quick fix, this is not perfect modeling. But just delete this top polygon and right click and choose close polygon hole. And this way we have a new polygon which will be connected with the other edges. 
So now we can go ahead again and add some more loop cuts to these. It is quite a lot of work on this one and maybe there is a faster way to do this, but I'm just going to do this manually to keep things simple. Okay, so that is all there is to it. I'm going to change one more thing, which is at the back piece right here. I'm just going to select this top polygon and move it up a little, so we have a little more curved end to it. And I'm also going to do the same thing at the bottom. So maybe let's add a nice camera with some increased focal length. And that way if you render, you should have something that looks like this. So that is all I wanted to show you guys this time. I know I went a little faster than I usually do in my videos. If there was anything that was unclear to you, you can also leave a comment and I will try to get to you. But also if you enjoyed this video, leaving a like really helps us out. And also one last thing, if you want to download this exact model you can see right now, you can find it on our Patreon page. I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.